I'm Bob Salzer, and I'm president of a newly formed uh, not-for-profit corporation called Cultural Landscape Legacies Incorporated. We have a website address if you want to track, track down more information on us. And it's simple. It's CLLI.org. And uh, you will find uh, uh, a link in there to the gotcha all stuff. So if you want to go review it and see some more, then you can. Um, cultural Landscape Legacies, the name Cultural Landscape, Landscape was selected by one of our, our founding, uh, 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 one of our founders, uh, John Blackdeer, a Ho-Chunk. And uh, he thought that this term most closely embodies what the interests of the Ho-Chunk are in what we do at Cultural Landscape Legacies. Um, cult what is a cultural landscape? I'm going to give you a definition uh, prepared, written down. The concept is a, not a new one. Uh, an, a preeminent scholar by the name of Carl Sauer, back in 1926, first coined the term and gave a definition to it. Its use is widespread amongst cultural geographers and <coughs> practically unknown up until very recent times amongst archaeologists. But it's a good term. And it's one of these concepts uh, that bridges the objectives of archaeology and the objectives of Native American peoples. So it's a good starting point for opening up a dialogue as clearly indicated by John Blackdeer coming up with a concept. Let me read this to you because uh, it's a lot easier for me. Um, and if you have questions, I can answer them. Uh, cultural landscape is considered as an integral ensemble of all that the human eye can observe from a single vantage point. Further, it is an informed view from a selected vantage point. It is informed because what one sees depends upon what one knows. That is, to read a landscape requires informed curiosity and the skills to derive meaning from what one sees. Such a landscape is not only a meaningful piece of our Earth home, but also a record of ourselves. Who we are, what we are, what we have created, what we value. It's kind of neat, isn't it? Well, there's a, a, an aspect of cultural landscapes that isn't emphasized in, in this definition, and that is that a landscape, a cultural landscape, teaches us, it informs us. Uh, someone pointed out in southwestern Wisconsin where there's lots of bluffs, they said, you know what that bluff is over there? And I said, uh, no. And they said, well, it's Ferry Bluff. And I said, how do you spell that? And which way? Well, F-E-R-R-Y. Before the first bridge was built on the Wisconsin River, the only way you could get across the river was by a ferry boat. And so that everyone could know where the ferry boat landing was, they selected a prominent bluff so that you could wander around and, oh, there it is. That's where Ferry Bluff is and go there and get the ferry. Now, you see what happened? I learned something about history and my own environment by tying into somebody else's cultural environment. It's really kind of neat. And so long as I pass this story on to you guys, then you'll pass it on. And you see how this goes. It's a cultural landscape that keeps reproducing itself all the time. 